Hello everyone! In this video we will have a look at some amazing world we two finds. Let's get right to the chase! The German Tanks After the fierce battles of World War II, a lot of military equipment was left in the ground and in the water. Tanks, armored cars and airplanes can still be found to this day. Sometimes the equipment is almost complete, sometimes it has to be assembled piece by piece. Tank parts can be scattered for hundreds of meters after ammunition explosion. In this story we will tell about a researcher looking for World War II artifacts, who managed to gather an interesting collection of German tank and armored vehicle parts. For several years the man dragged war artifacts into his backyard. It's worth noting the excellent condition of the finds, there is almost no corrosion on the metal. Inscriptions and German crosses marked with white paint are preserved on some parts. We do not know what the seeker did with these finds. Maybe the parts were given to the restorers or they are still in his backyard. T-70 tank The T-70 light tank came from Melitopol to St. Petersburg for a thorough and complicated restoration. The machine weighed 10 tons and was armed with a 45mm cannon. More than 8,000 tanks of this type were produced during the Second World War. They were in service on all fronts almost until the end of the war. During the liberation of Melitopol from the German troops and their allies in October 1943, it was this tank of the 22nd Guards Tank Regiment that took part in the first battle. The tank was damaged, and after the battle was erected as a monument on the place where it fought its last battle. The commander of the tank, Lieutenant Gavrushov, died in the battle. It is a rare case when a tank was made a monument during the war. It became one of the symbols of Melitopol. Local citizens, brothers Yuri and Alexander, volunteered to take the vehicle for restoration. When the tank was taken off the pedestal, there was information that Russia planned to use it in combat operations. Needless to say, this is nonsense. These pictures show the tank completely disassembled and ready for restoration. The tank is being restored by specialists from the Russian Military Historical Society from the Kalabanov Museum of the Battle of Leningrad. These experts are very experienced. They have already restored more than 50 units of military equipment that were used in the Battle of Leningrad during the World War II. After the restoration, the tank will be brought back to its original place. West – The Floating Battery Russian underwater explorers have confirmed the success of Soviet naval aviation pilots during the World War II. In the Gulf of Finland, divers discovered the German floating battery West sunk in May 1943. The man who had sunk the enemy ship never found out what kind of heroic deed they had performed. At a depth of 44 meters in the murky water, Divers filmed the huge hull, the stern superstructure and the surviving anti-aircraft guns. This is the German floating battery West. It weighed over a thousand tons and was 60 meters long. On the night of September 15, 1943, three MBR-2 reconnaissance planes of the 58th Independent Air Squadron of the Red Banner Baltic Fleet attacked German ships conducting patrols in the Gulf of Finland near Big Tutors Island. The crew of one of the planes dropped 100 kg bombs and returned to the base. The command reported damage to an enemy ship. The bombing took place at night and the pilots themselves couldn't do much more than take a photo. They simply didn't see the consequences of their bombing. They thought the bomb fell somewhere near the hull. Maybe it damaged the ship, but in fact they had a direct hit in the bow. The bomb exploded in the hold and in a few minutes the ship went sideways and sank. And so a modest entry remained in that battle report. 
Bombardment of the enemy ship, no big victory was achieved. Three pilots, three Nikolais, junior lieutenants Karolev and Borisov, and Sergeant Zavizion continued their service. Karolev and Borisov died tragically later in 1944 during an attack on a German convoy in the Gulf of Riga. Zavizion was transferred to a training regiment. The fact that now, even after 80 years, historical justice has been restored is of a great importance, say the members of the submarine expedition. At the end of April 2018, in St. Petersburg, an excavator dug up fragments of a rusted World War II aircraft at a construction site. The remains of the body were also found. It turned out that the pilot who defended the sky of Leningrad in June 1941 was 27 years old Vasily Bukhtiev. Until that time, his relatives considered him missing. Immediately after the discovery, demoness and searchers arrived. The area was checked for the presence of explosive objects, after which, from a two-meter depth, volunteers raised and cleared fragments of the aircraft. More than 70 years ago, the MiG-3 combat vehicle turned into a heap of steel from hitting the ground. When the cockpit was dug up, the body of the pilot was noticed under the armored seat back. The clay preserved it quite well. The diggers found a wallet, a party membership card and a marriage certificate in the pocket of the flight suit. The kilt was the deputy squadron commander, senior lieutenant Vasily Petrovich Bukhtiev, pilot of the 5th Fighter Regiment of the 61st Air Force Brigade. The World War II became the third war in the young pilot's life. In 1939 he took part in the warfare on Halkingol. In 1940 he fought the Finns. By September 1941 Vasily Bukhtiev already had two awards for military merits – the Red Banner Order and the Red Star Order. He was posthumously nominated for the Medal for Courage, having shot down five enemy aircraft in his last group air battle in the skies over Leningrad. At the time of his death, he was only 27 years old. The searchers found out that senior Lieutenant Bukhtiev died on September 14, 1941, during air battles over the Pulkova Heights. Sixteen aircraft from three fighter aviation regiments flew in the direction of Pulkova to cover the troops in the Krasnoye Silo Pulkova area. The pilots went through five air battles with groups of BF-109. Today, we can only assume how the pilot died. Judging by the recovered fragments, the aircraft didn't burn in the air, the parachute remained packed, and there was fuel in the gas tank to return. The first aid kit is deformed and punctured, and there are torn shrapnel holes everywhere in the cockpit. Most likely, Vasily was killed in the air. Before the war, he was married, had a son, and lived with his family in Leningrad. All this time, his relatives considered him missing. Well, that's all for today. Thank you all for watching. You can support our channel with a sponsorship for only $1 or by sending us a super thank. Good luck to all!